Hello friends, here is a uh, short time, I hope, uh, where I uh, wanted to give you something for uh, inspiration and for thought uh, for this week. Um, and I like to tell mission stories, so I looked up a, a book in a book I have about mission stories and reading about one in Brazil, so I decided to look up and see if I could, I, the missionaries weren't identified in the story, so I looked up to see who uh, has served in Brazil, and I came across a couple who are still in Brazil and were there back when this book was published in 1995. So anyway, this is about, I'm going to read this part and then, this, then I'll read the story. Uh, this is about Gordon and Dorothy Gartrell's ministry. Uh, Dor Gordon and Dorothy Gartrell are missionaries in Brazil. They've worked there from 1990 until 2008. And then again, we're working started in 2012 again, after I guess a four-year hiatus. Maybe they did something in this country before they went back to Brazil. Uh, the Reverend Dorothy and Reverend Gordon and Dorothy Gartrell work in partnership with the United Presbyterian Church of Brazil, which their initials uh, in, in Portuguese, which is the language they speak in Brazil, is IPU in ministries of leadership development and evangelism. Because there are more churches than pastors in the IPU, the United Presbyterian Church of Brazil, the Gartrells are helping to develop lay leadership and are providing resources for local churches. Uh, Brazil is South America's most influential country, an economic giant and one of the world's biggest democracies. Brazil also has a large manufacturing sector, a significant portion of which is comprised of automotive and aviation and manufacturing. After years of economic boom and bust, changing currencies, hyperinflation, and foreign debt, Brazil's economy and currency have been stable for more than a decade. However, much of the arable land is controlled by wealthy landowners and international corporations, and a large gap exists between the rich and the poor. A sermon in 1859, listen to that date, a sermon in 1859 in the chapel of Princeton Seminary inspired the first Presbyterian missionary to come to Brazil. The Presbyterian Church USA partners with the United Presbyterian Church of Brazil, one of several local Presbyterian denominations, through sending mission personnel who focus on redeveloping small churches. The IPU, the United Presbyterian Church of Brazil, focuses on church growth, ecumenism, which is working with other denominations, and lifting up a prophetic voice, lifting up a prophetic voice against injustice. You know, it said in this earlier, it said there's a large gap between the rich and the poor. Presbyterian World Mission also partners with the Graduate Program for Religious Studies of the Methodist University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, one of the region's premier graduate theological facilities. When Gordon and Dorothy were first appointed to serve as mission co-workers in Brazil in 1990, both already held a deep passion for the country and its people. Gordon grew up, grew up in Brazil, where his parents, Sandy and Bert Gartrell, were missionaries for 31 years. He sensed a call to ministry early in his teen years and during his seminary studies in, in the United States, he returned to Brazil for short-term service. He lived with a veteran missionary family and served along the Trans-Amazon Highway. I saw Brazil through adult, adult eyes and not simply from a child's perspective, Gordon said. God was in, indeed calling me to Brazil to continue my life's work of sharing Jesus Christ. Dorothy also sensed the Holy Spirit's stirrings early in her life. As a child, I had a vision of getting on a ship and going to serve the Lord overseas, she said. After college, she, she volunteered to serve in Brazil for two years as a teacher of missionary children. There the Lord opened my eyes to the need of the people and how many of the gifts God had given me could be enriched and used to help Brazilians. Dorothy went back to the United States for further education, but knew that she wanted to return to Brazil for long-term mission service. She and Gordon served in Brazil for 18 years in church planting and evangelism until their assignment with their previous partner, the Independent Presbyterian Church of Brazil, ended. They have worked with the United Presbyterian Church of Brazil since 2012. There's the four years. I didn't read this close enough. The Gartrells are excited about their work and about how they have seen the emergence of new leaders. 
God has given my wife and me a real compassion and love for the Brazilian people, Gordon said. We want to share God's love with them. We want to strengthen the Brazilian church. When Brazilians devote themselves to Christ, Dorothy said, it ignites a, a deep change in their lives. We have seen Brazilians become leaders and have learned many things in the process of helping them become stronger leaders. The Gartrells enjoy the challenge of creating new programs with many different theme, themes. They feel it's been a blessing to meet this challenge. Now, let me read this story, which I think maybe has something to do with Gartrells, because they were there between uh, in 1995 when this story was written. It's called, Where is Dorado's? Where in the world is Dorado's? It's part of Brazil, but it's not a part of Brazil that we usually think about. It's down near the border of Paraguay. It's more like West Texas than the parts of Brazil that we usually think about, such as the Amazon. It's just desolate there, and there are a lot of snow sandstorms. Many native people live there. The Presbyterian Church has served there for a number of years and has served very carefully. At one time, the Methodist mission was put out of Dorados by the government because people said the mission was interfering with their culture and trying to change it. We have tried very hard not to do that. We have a seminary there, a school for children, and two hospitals, one of which is a tubercular hospital because there is so much tuberculosis in that area. There's also a big church, and, a, and it's very, very active. All of these things that the Presbyterians have are outside the actual area where the indigenous people live. I think the government lets us stay because we were not inside their living territory trying to change the way they live. The school children are really the hope for that part of the world. When we visited, they sang Christian songs and their faces were bright and happy. The area we visited was very desolate. One of the sad things was that they still used wood for cooking and there was never much wood in that area. It was a prairie area, and they have just used up all their wood. The missionaries told me that every time they go in, they try to take a pickup load of wood because the people need wood as much as they need anything else. That's amazing. The people were poor and usually barefoot, and there's a heavy drinking problem among the male population. The women look particularly desperate. Some of the little children would run away from us when we came in because they had heard bad stories about white people being demons. But when we go in with our missionary, children would rush to her. Mothers would hand her their babies to hold and she would talk to the women. It was rewarding to see what an impact the Presbyterian mission work had in Dorados. God works wherever we can, wherever we can be and whatever we can do. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this nice day. We pray that you would help us to enjoy it, to be productive. Lord, we also pray for, for our work as your people. Lord, when we read stories of people far, far away working in different places in the world, it reminds us how much there is for us to do right here in this country. Heavenly Father, inspire us in your service. Show us the opportunities to reach out to those in our neighborhoods and communities. Help us to find, help us to find those places where we can help change people's lives and know that it is through your grace and your love Lord, we pray for our sisters and brothers, uh, all of them, in our, especially in our church family, in, in their needs and in their concerns, for those who have not been well, for those who are sick, for those we have been praying for, and for our own families, Lord. We lift our hearts and minds in prayer and ask that you would be with us. We ask all these things in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, friends. Hope this didn't take too long. Um, hope to see you Sunday and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.